Netflix has plenty of horror and scary movies to choose from this year, so if you're looking for a good fright, here are the top 10 horror movies streaming on Netflix. Starting off our countdown at number 10 is As Above, So Below. Archaeologist Scarlett Marlowe has devoted her whole life to finding one of history's greatest treasures, Flamel's Philosopher's Stone. According to legend, the artifact can grant eternal life and turn metal into gold. When she learns that the stone is hidden underground in the catacombs of Paris, she assembles a crew to guide and document her historic mission. As they begin their descent, the team members have no way of knowing that they are entering their own personal hell. This movie is shot in the found footage style of films like The Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity. Those films have done very well in the category and as above, so below is one that you can add to that list. Coming in next at number 9 is The Ravenous. The Ravenous is an eerily melancholy horror story set in a contemporary Quebec countryside, where the line between life and death is relentlessly smudged and the survival instinct is repeatedly undermined by fatalistic resignation. What does that mean exactly? One thing. Flesh-eating zombies. These zombies are from an unknown origin and they're out to infect and devour humans. The zombies can only be terminated with bullets to the head or through the energetic application of sharp instruments. An increasingly desperate and gradually dwindling group of survivors take their last best shot at traveling towards a safe haven. This sounds like your typical zombie movie, however, The Ravenous comes with a twist. Not only do we never discover precisely what caused the zombie outbreak, we never really learn what unites and drives the undead, or why they periodically gather to gaze at immense mounds of toys, furniture, appliances, and other remnants of their pre-zombie existence. Maybe they remain cognizant enough to vaguely recall what they used to be, and then again, Maybe not. Coming in at number 8 is the classic Poltergeist. In the cozy suburbs of California, Steve and his wife Diane have purchased a home there. They live a middle class life with their three adorable children, however, once they move into their house, odd things begin happening. Something eerily draws their daughter Carol Ann to the upstairs TV which is tuned into static. She has random conversations with unknown entities though as if someone is talking back to her. Carol Ann then goes to bed, but something wakes her and draws her to the TV again. An apparition bursts from the screen and enters the opposite wall, causing an odd sort of earthquake. This wakes everyone in the house, and when they look at Carol Ann staring at the TV, she looks back at them and eerily says the classic line, They're here. The family must then battle with the spirits to not lose their daughter to them forever. Poltergeist is a classic horror film that everyone should see at least once in their lifetime. Up next at number 7 is Eli. Eli Miller is a young boy suffering from a rare disease that causes severe allergic reactions to the outdoors, forcing him to live his life in protective gear. His parents have taken him to Dr. Isabella Horn's secluded medical facility, a large old house that has been modernized and quarantined. Eli is initially overjoyed that the facility allows him to remove his bubble suit. He can then hug his parents and enjoy comforts that were previously denied to him. Eli's joy is short-lived, however, as he begins to experience supernatural phenomena in the house. He also begins his treatments with the doctor, which are excruciatingly painful. The specters repeatedly leave him the message, lie, and Eli begins to wonder if they are trying to warn him about Horn's treatments. Eli then discovers the word lie is actually an inverted number 317, the passcode to Horn's office. When he investigates the office, he finds Horn's records of past patients showing that all of them were killed by the third and final treatment. He must then find a way to escape the house and make it out alive before the third and final treatment comes. Up next at number 6 is Gerald's Game. A married couple arrive at an isolated house for a holiday to try to rekindle their love life. And just when they are about to get into things, the husband dies of a sudden heart attack. His wife is then left handcuffed to the bed without a key and with little hope of rescue. In an isolated cabin in which the door was left open, she must find a way to survive the situation. She then begins hearing and seeing strange things, all while restrained to the bed with no way out. Gerald's Game is a Stephen King novel adaptation that took 15 years to be made into a film. You'll have to watch it to find out why. Coming in at number 5 on our list is Malevolent. Angela and Jackson are two American siblings who, with a small team of paranormal investigators, run a fake medium scam on clients who believe their houses are haunted. Jackson orchestrates all of the scams because of a debt he owes to loan sharks. However, their next assignment turns out to be much more than they can handle. During their latest assignment, strange incidents occur causing Angela to worry about the parallels to her mother, who heard voices and wound up committing suicide because she saw people who weren't there. This new assignment turns out to be not a scam. There is actual paranormal activity in the house. 
Angela and Jackson then have to make their way out of the house alive. As a warning, this film does get pretty graphic in parts, so viewer discretion is advised. But if you're into that type of film, then this one is definitely for you. Up next at number 4 is Hush. Maddie Young is a deaf woman and horror writer who lost her ability to hear and speak after a botched corrective surgery. Hoping to advance her career as an author, she lives an isolated life in the woods with her cat. Her friend Sarah visits one evening to return a copy of her book. While discussing her writing, Maddie explains how she visualizes her stories and considers numerous potential endings before deciding on one. The killer then quickly realizes Maddie is deaf and decides to make her his next victim. He sneaks into her house, steals her phone, takes photos of her, and sends them to her. As Maddie realizes she is being stalked, the man cuts the power and sabotages her car to prevent escape. This is your classic intruder thriller film, but the added elements of the characters not being able to hear or speak really make this a different style of horror film. Coming in at number 3 on our list is Sleepy Hollow. In 1799, New York City Police Constable Ichabod Crane is dispatched to the Dutch hamlet of Sleepy Hollow, which has been plagued by a series of brutal decapitations. Locals are sure who the killer is. The undead apparition of a headless Hessian mercenary from the American Revolution War, who rides a black steed in search of his missing head. Skeptical of the paranormal story, Ichabod begins his investigation. Soon after, Ichabod witnesses the horseman killing Philippe's. He then ventures into the western woods and finds a crone living in a cave, who reveals the location of the horseman's grave at the Tree of the Dead. Ichabod digs up the horseman's grave and sees that the skull has been taken. He deduces that it was stolen by someone who now controls the horseman and that the tree is his portal to the living world. This Tim Burton take on the classic novel The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is sure to keep you on the edge of your seat. Next up at number 2 on our list is Sinister. Ellison Oswalt moves into a home with his wife Tracy, their son Trevor, and their daughter Ashley. Ellison moved into a home where a family was murdered and intends to use their case as the basis for his new book. He hopes that his research will reveal the fate of the Stevenson family's fifth member, Stephanie, who disappeared following the murders. Ellison finds a box in the attic that contains a projector and several reels of Super 8mm footage, each labeled as home movies. However, these are not home movies. The films are footage depicting the murders of different families in various ways. Each murder is performed by an unseen person who is holding the camera. Ellison notes the appearance of a mysterious semicircular symbol in the film as well as a strange masked figure. Such symbols refer to an ancient and obscure pagan deity named Bagul. Bagul would kill entire families and take one of their children to slowly consume their soul. Ellison reaches out to the local police who suspects that the murders are part of a cult initiation rite rather than the work of a single person stretching across decades. Will Ellison's family be the next victims of the Bagul? Watch Sinister to find out. And coming in at number one on our list as the best horror movie on Netflix right now is a surprise double feature of Creep and its sequel, Creep 2. The original Creep is about a young videographer who answers an online ad for a one-day job in a remote town to record the last messages of a dying man. When he notices the man's odd behavior, he starts to question his intentions. An increasingly disturbed Aaron finds his attempt at departing hindered by being unable to locate his car keys. He intercepts a phone call from a woman named Angela who reveals that she is actually the man's sister and urges Aaron to escape. The man, who goes by the name of Joseph, however, attempts to stop Aaron from leaving and a scuffle ensues before Aaron does get away. Back at his home, Aaron starts receiving items in the mail from Joseph, including a recording of Joseph digging a grave. The police are unable to take action due to Aaron knowing little about Joseph, whom Aaron realizes is stalking him. A final DVD is sent to Aaron, where Joseph offers to meet him in a public park to make amends. Aaron accepts Joseph's offer, but places a camera on himself and sets his phone to speed dial to the police as a precaution. Aaron then sits and waits on a park bench for Joseph to arrive. And that's where we'll leave Creep, and we'll move on to the sequel, Creep 2. A similar plotline, the serial killer lures videographer Sarah to his home, and then changes his approach by admitting that he actually is a serial killer and will let her live for the next 24 hours if she records a documentary of his life. Sarah, who produces an unsuccessful web series about eccentric individuals she meets through Craigslist, accepts the request, doubting his revelation and seeing the documentary as an opportunity for her series to gain attention. The serial killer struggles to intimidate Sarah, who plays along with his various eccentricities. Sarah is then faced with the same video in the first film, the killer digging a grave for her. Just like the first movie, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but just know that Rotten Tomatoes gave this film 100% for a reason. Check out Creep and Creep 2. 
And that's our list of the top 10 horror films streaming on Netflix for this spooky season of October. If you liked this video, consider subscribing to the channel for more videos. Drop a like if you enjoyed this list, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.